Happy Friday and welcome back to Drinking by Myself. Oh my god, look at all of this. So I'm about to play Balancing the Bugs, but I also have some really exciting things to show you guys. As you all know, I love a wine. And recently I discovered a really fun company because I got this voucher through work for a wine tasting from Pierroth Wines. So basically, Pierroth Wines came around to my house one Saturday night, I had a group of friends around, and they brought with them like 10 different bottles of wine for us to try. And we had a really fun evening, a few hours. They advised us to have like cheese and biscuits ready and grapes and chocolate. And we just spent a few hours trying all of these different absolutely delicious wines. I'll put their website link in the description box below so you can click through and go and read all about them and check them out because they're really cool. And because I loved it so much, I thought you guys want to hear about it. So I called them up and said I had such a great time. I would really like to tell my audience about it. And so they very kindly sent me, ah! five vouchers that you guys could win. So I have a range of different vouchers here and I will tell you at the end of this video how you can win them. But they vary from, some of them are for six people, some of them are for four people, some of them are valid any time and some of them are Monday to Thursday. So I will lay all of that out in the description box below so you know exactly what the prizes that I've got are and what the difference is between them all. But at the end of this video, keep watching and I will tell you how you can win these. And just in case I hadn't tried enough of their amazing wines, they sent me these three bottles. So during the course of this video, I'm gonna try out all the different ones. I've got a red, a white, and a rose. Yum, okay, so while I'm doing that, let's play Balancing the Books. I left my corkscrew over there, my goodness. So I've got a stack of books to get through talking to you about in this video. I hauled a lot of books this month, but I also read a lot of books this month. So we're in here for the long haul. Haul, <laughs> literally, get it. So let's start with the white wine while I tell you about all the books that I hauled. I'm not very good at using a corkscrew. I'm usually one of those classy, screw top kind of bottle kind of gals. But this is the good stuff. Also, can we just talk about how nice these bottles are? I love this blue bottle of wine. It's absolutely beautiful. So this is the Pierroth Blue. This is their flagship white wine. It's their bestseller. And I'm gonna try it out now. Oh God, that's absolutely delicious. So this is a German wine and it is so, I don't like sweet wine and this is amazing. So this is, it's a dry wine, but it's got this like, honey-ish aftertaste. So it's still not sweet, but that adds, oh, something amazing to it. Dangerous as well, because that goes down smooth. I could drink this like it was juice. Okay, so while I'm massively enjoying this wine, let's tell you about the books I hauled this month. I finished at the end of last month with 42 books left on my TBR. So the aim for balancing the books, if you're a newcomer, is to balance them, I have to end up this month having got as many books off my TBR as came on. So that number has to be 42 or lower, preferably. And I'm gonna start with two books that I hauled that, amazingly, do not affect that total because <sighs> this is just me being frivolous with my money. These are books that I didn't really need to buy because I already read them, so they don't add to my TBR. But I bought Daisy Jones and the Six and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. But yay me, that didn't add anything to my score. Come back wine, I miss you already. The next book that I bought is Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. I have read it, so it goes off my TBR. I literally just finished reading it on the train today. I really enjoyed it. I wouldn't say that I was blown away by it. I know a lot of people have been talking about this one and I really did enjoy it. So it's a very short, very odd, quirky little story about a woman who works at a convenience store and basically just doesn't fit in with society's idea of what normal means. And that's what the book is about. It's about her questioning why there is such a strict idea of what normal is supposed to be and kind of showing the hypocrisy of it because people find her really strange, but when you see everyone else through her eyes, they all seem equally strange, like just because she goes along with her logic for how life should be, why is her logic any different from other people's logic? So it was really good in that sense. It does really expose the fact that society is so arbitrary and so strict, like such a machine churning out like the same types of people and what we think people are supposed to be. So I really liked what it was doing, but it just didn't blow me away. Okay, then I hauled a whole bunch of horror books. So I've just filmed our horror video for Book Break. I'm also not gonna go into too much detail on these books because I don't wanna spoil the entire contents of our horror Book Break video. So I'll just show you the books that I got. The books that I hauled and then read so they're gonna instantly come on and off my TBR are Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Really, really enjoyed this one. I've talked about it in another video. Nosferatu by Joe Hill. Joe Hill is actually Stephen King's son. White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi. This is my second Helen Oyeyemi that I've read this year. I read Gingerbread, and I've read this one. I've got another one waiting on my desk at work for me to read. This is a very odd, haunting book where the house is actually a character in the story, 
fascinating stuff. I got The Voices by F.R. Talis, creepy, creepy, creepy one. That was the most explicitly like haunted house, ghosts, don't read it in the dark when you're alone one on this list. Bird Box, I finally read Bird Box. People have been talking about Bird Box on Bookshoe for years. And finally this one I borrowed from my line manager at work, Lovecraft Country. This is getting adapted into a TV show by Jordan Peele, so keep your eyes peeled for that one because I feel like it's gonna be really good. I know that there was no detail at all in any of that, but that's because, as I said, I already did it and I don't want to distract from the book break video, so just go and watch it there, you'll find them all over there. I cannot tell you how much I'm enjoying this wine. But I'm still not done. I still kept buying books. Well, having said that, here's two that I didn't buy. I got them from work. But I got My House Is Falling Down by Mary Loudon. So this is a novel that sounds really interesting and about the kind of things that I think about a lot anyway and question a lot anyway. So it's about infidelity, but in a relationship where nobody lies. So it's totally open to the fact that the wife has fallen in love with another man. Society kind of draws those lines for us rather than us in our individual relationships working those lines out. So it sounds like this book is gonna be something that really explores those issues. And I also got Diary of a Somebody. So this is Brian Bilston, the Twitter poet. Look him up on Twitter. He's hilarious and powerful. He writes these really great poems all on Twitter and they're fab. This, though, is not a collection of poems. This is a novel about a character called Brian Bilston. So Brian Bilston is not his real name. It's the name that he uses for his poetry. And this is a novel about that persona, who is a poet. Sounds really fun. But the list goes on. I went on the booktube meetup over the weekend and I bought both of Madeline Miller's books. So I actually set out just to buy Cersei, but we went to Gaze the Word, best bookshop in the world, and they had Song of Achilles. And I've heard such amazing things about both of these books. I just couldn't decide which one to get. So I got them both. Really putting all my eggs in one basket. Let's hope that I love Madeline Miller as much as the rest of the world seems to. I'm really into the Greek mythology retellings at the moment. Oh, <sighs> still not even done. At the booktube meetup, Katie from Books and Things very kindly brought me some proofs from her work because I thought they sounded really great. So this is a thriller. This is The Dangerous Kind. And it says it's gonna make me second guess everyone I meet, which <laughs> sounds great. Can't wait to be paranoid. But this is literally about like, potentially dangerous people. So people who have not yet been convicted of any crime, but whose behavior gives reason to believe that they may be dangerous. Exciting, I love being scared of everyone. And then, totally different, a lovely feminist dual timeline novel. I love those. This is The Woman in the Photograph by Stephanie Butland. And it's literally about a woman in a photograph. So a photograph that's at the center of this feminist exhibition. And then at the same time, you explore the timeline of who the woman in the photograph was. I cannot get enough of that kind of shit. Which means I am now on 48 books on my TBR. Not too terrible, considering quite how many I hauled. I have read a lot of them in the same month, which is good. Still quite high though, so let's see how many other books I managed to read that can get that number down. But when we move on though, it is time to taste the next wine. So my next wine is a rosé. This is the Piccolo Mini Rosé. This is an Italian wine. Yeah. Oh, I love rosé. That tastes like summer. Is it summer yet? Oh, I could drink buckets of that outside in the sun. Okay, so the books I've read, other than all of those horror books that I've already told you about, starting with one more horror one. So this is another one that I read for Book Break, but I didn't haul it this month. I actually bought it at the beginning of this year and hadn't got around to it yet. But this is The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. Finally read that one this month. It's tiny. It's just a novella. Um, and it was fine. I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. And I've included it in the video because I definitely recommend it if you like Gillian Flynn. It's really short. It's something fun. It's a good story. But... I absolutely loved Gone Girl and I loved um, Sharp Objects and this one isn't as dark and twisted and clever as those but this one's supernatural which those don't have so it's definitely really fun and it's a fun open-ended story where you don't quite know who to believe or what's going to happen and it's funny as well it's a like comedy horror so a lot of the books I read this month left me properly really scared and this isn't one that will actually scare you it's just like a fun supernatural horror fun one down. I read, and I don't have it here because I actually gave it to my dad, but I read A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. Oh, my button's undone. <laughs> How long's that been like that? What was I saying? Flustered now. A Thousand Ships. That was a retelling of the Iliad, basically, from the perspective of all of the women involved. That was the other one that I put in my March Favourites video as a book that I absolutely loved this month. So go over to that video. I will link it in the description below for more details on that. If I shut my eyes while I drink this, I feel like I'm outside on a summer's day. A book that I read on NetGalley, so I don't have a physical copy, that is The Evidence Against You by Gillian McAllister. 
loved this one. So I have read all of Gillian McAllister's books like the second they came out. I think I've read all of them actually on NetGalley so far and then I go back and buy the physical copies because I enjoyed them so much. And this one, Extra Fun, was set on the Isle of Wight where my parents live. So that was really cool. So the story, my goodness, is great. So it's about a woman. She's grown up now. But back when she was a teenager, her father was put in prison for murdering her mother. And her whole life, she's always just believed that's what happened. And it's this terrible tragedy in her past. But now, fast forward 18 years, he is out on good behaviour, on parole. And he comes to see her and says that he didn't do this. And she does not know what to think. Because, as the title suggests, all of the evidence against him says that he did. And it's about her figuring out who to believe, what really happened rebuilding this relationship with her father who she had just written off without even questioning it because I guess she just couldn't like she didn't have the mental the emotional capacity to cope with there being doubt and Judy McAllister is really really good at writing very believable fleshed out characters so I totally sympathize with her and empathize with her even though I don't think that's how I would react I mean how can you know you don't know how you'd react but even though it wasn't how I think I would react, I still totally empathised with her, like, every step of the way. And it was great. I mean, so many twists and turns. Judy McAllister, I think this is my favourite one of hers so far. And finally, the last book that I read this month, I finally read, having bought it, like, the day it came out last year, Ogre Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. I read this one literally the day after I finally finished reading all of those horror books for Book Break, and I was like, I need something that's not going to give me nightmares. What is the opposite of horror? Ella Enchanted sequel, or prequel, actually. So this is, Ella Enchanted is my favourite book, my favourite childhood book, talked about it a lot, I've got a whole video about it, I've got two whole videos about it, I'll link to them both. And this book, Ogre Enchanted, came out last year and is set in the same world. But, I did not love this book. In fact, I was very disappointed with this book. It was not as charming as Ella Enchanted, and it was not as feminist and subversive as Ella Enchanted. So Ella Enchanted, what I love about it is it takes the Cinderella story and totally flips it and totally makes it about her being empowered and finding her own way to defeat this spell. Whereas Ogre Enchanted, I felt like was just a classic fairy tale story and a nice one. It wasn't that I had a problem with it. It just, it didn't do anything in my mind to subvert the classic fairy tale story. Okay, so I'm going to open the final wine and do a bit of maths to figure out how I've done with balancing my books. So this one is the Chevalier de Bayard. This is a French wine, as you can probably guess from that name, and apparently also one of their absolute customer favorites. Let's just finish that rosé off. Ooh, that is such a drinkable red. I'm not usually a massive red wine drinker. I like it a lot more than I used to. I go through phases with it, but white wine, I just find a lot easier to drink. But actually this goes down a treat. It's light and it's fruity. Yeah, okay, that's three out of three successes. I'm glad I've got the rest of those bottles left to enjoy. But in terms of my balancing the books, I am now finishing on 44 books, which no one could call that balanced. I'm gonna have to somehow get rid of two books from my TBR in order to balance that out. This is my least favorite part of the game, my goodness. My TBR shelf is up there. I'm just gonna kneel on the sofa and have a look and see what I can get rid of. <sighs> okay. I've made my decisions. Gonna need some more wine to get me through this sad process of taking books off my TBR. Firstly, I have a book that I borrowed from my colleague almost a year ago, probably at this point. So I don't know if this is cheating, but I'm gonna give it back to him with the knowledge that maybe one day in the future I could borrow it again. But it's just, there's no point me clinging onto it when it may be months and months and months before I ever get to read it. That is 10 by Gretchen McNeil. So he lent me this one at the same time he lent me, what was it called? hashtag murder trending and it took me like nine months to read murder trending and then when i did i really enjoyed it it was a really fun book but this one i feel like is a kind of retelling of agatha christie and then there were none and i only just recently read and then there were none so i'm probably not going to read this one for a little while so i might as well give it back to him rather than just keeping it for another year and maybe andy please you'll lend it to me again in the future when i'm ready for it other one that i picked is this one does look great it does look really really good but it also looks like it might be quite violent and i'm not good at reading violent books so that is the dead girls which is based on this true story about basically these serial killer brothel owners it sounds super super dark and i love really dark stuff and apparently it's also funny which is really interesting how to make that story funny so I am really intrigued by this one but I have read that it is quite violent and I'm not very good at that stuff 
So, if I sadly take these two off my TBR, I'm so sad about this, but then I always feel happy when it's done because I love my TBR going down, means I would have officially bounced the books and I'll be back on 42 where I started. So, now we get to the fun part for you, which is how you can get your hands on one of these babies. So, firstly, you do have to be based in the UK. There are home wine tasting service that will come to your house. It's available all across the UK, but unfortunately not outside it. But the rest of you are in luck. You are in the runnings to win one of five of these vouchers. There's five lucky winners. And you could end up drinking some of this delicious wine, this Pure Earth Blue, honestly. Of the three of those wines, I loved all of them. I really genuinely did enjoy all of them. But this is out of this world. This is like a whole other league. Yeah, I seriously wasn't exaggerating. Here I am from the future, still working my way through this delicious bottle. I'm really scared what's gonna happen when it's over. But I'm just popping in from the future to tell you one more exciting piece of news. Even if you are not one of the lucky winners to win a voucher, I also have a promo code for you. So all you have to do is go to the website, again, I have linked it in the description box below, and if you want to buy one of the wine tasting experiences for yourself, if you use the promo code Emma Wine, you will get these experiences at one quarter of the price. Thank you so much, Pure Earth Wines, for that. That's fantastic. Now, past Emma was about to tell you about how to win the voucher. Let's go back to her. So all I'm going to ask you to do to enter is to leave a comment below, but I thought I would combine this I've been meaning to do the reaction to your assumptions about my video, oh my god I know, so late to the bandwagon, so cliche but it just looks fun, and I did it on Instagram and I've got some answers saved in my phone from there, or some assumptions rather, saved in my phone from there, so I thought I would get some more from here and then I can put them all together. So to be in the runnings, literally all you have to do is comment below with an assumption about me. If you're not in the UK but you still want to put an assumption, do feel free to go ahead and do that, but unfortunately I won't be able to send you one of these. I will then enter all of your names and draw them totally randomly out of like a computer generator. And I hope you win, whoever you are. It's genuinely such a fun experience. I could not have enjoyed my home wine tasting more. That's why I called them up to partner with them because I genuinely really enjoyed it. So I genuinely wanted to share that with you guys. And as usual, do give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button below for new videos every week. See you next time.